Hey guys, we're here at PGC Helsinki and I am speaking to Jonathan Eng, who has worked with it's Sumogo and all of their lovely games, is that right? A few of them at least. A few of them yeah. at least, fantastic. <laughs> so which games have you worked on specifically? Uh, I've worked on Yearwalk, Device 6 and The Sailor's Dream. And rather than being a coder, you actually provide the soundtrack, is that right? Yeah, or uh, a few songs at least. Okay. Is this your first experience working as a composer for video games, or have you done this thing quite a lot? This is my first time. Okay. And do you come from a background of, I don't know, working with other sound software or working with uh, composers in other fields, so film, that sort of thing, or is it the first experience, full stop? Not really. I, I see myself as a bedroom recorder very much. It's okay. uh, very small scale, but uh, I think that's maybe what has, uh, why that has worked out well with Sumogo. It's, it doesn't sound like game music a lot of the time, so uh, I think that's what makes, makes it special. Well, Samogra are, are known for doing sort of quite unusual games. They're also known for changing up their styles quite frequently as well. So one thing will be a, an interactive story adventure or Device 6 where you're constantly turning the screens around and then you've got something like Beat Sneak Bandit, which is a rhythm-based sort of almost rhythm action game where you're stealthing around. Were you familiar with their work before they got on board? How did you two get connected? So it all started with um, the game Portal, actually, back in 2007. I was frequenting, frequenting this video games forum and there was a user on the forum that urged people to write music based on Portal. So, uh, you know in the end credits of Portal, yes, there's yes. a Still Alive song. Yeah. So I wrote this romantic ballad as a sort of reply to that song. And uh, a few years later, Simogo was going to release their first game called Cosmos Spin. And Simon Flesser, uh, one half of Simogo, messaged me and asked if I could uh, write a similar song to the trailer for the first game. So. so they literally reached out to you rather than vice versa. So if someone was trying to get into this kind of thing, because obviously this is a business focused channel that we run here, so people are obviously interested in finding out how they can make contact with these kind of people. Literally in your example, you were just producing off of your own back in a public forum and people sought you out. Did you have any inkling that maybe something will come of this, or was it done purely for your own entertainment value? It was pure entertainment. Uh, it wasn't any plan to uh, connect with anyone, really. Uh, I just posted on the, on the forum, and uh, it was just a fun thing. Uh, and how have you found the experience? Once you were asked to do the music, did you start, well, freaking out is a good term, or was it kind of like, oh, this will be fun, and again, it's just another little experiment that you can, you can try out? Uh, the music with Forcimogo sort of ramped up for me, so I started doing music for the trailers and then I got to do a music for the end credits in Yearwalk and it sort of grew. So by the time they were going to release the Sailor Stream, I got to do in the entire soundtrack and I was sort of freaking out about that. It was scary because I didn't know if I could pull it off, uh, but yeah, it, it sort of grew naturally and that's how I managed it. And when you're doing something like that, so you're working on a soundtrack and they come up with sort of interesting creative storylines, the guys at Samogo, how much do you see beforehand? Do they sit down, pitch you the entire story as a, as a way of inspiring the music that will come of it? Or do they say, we want something that will go at the end credit, make it happy, make it sad? How much specifics do they go into? Uh, it goes to more specifics as the project grows, I think. It's, very, it's a very iterative process, so I play builds uh, as they build the game and write music all along. So, uh, But at the beginning of the Sailor Stream, I wasn't asked to write like specific songs for specific scenarios or anything like that. I just wrote music that was fitting for the game and then we would find certain places where they would fit. Okay. And how long did the process take? I mean, so especially with these games which are small studios, turnover can happen quite quickly with this thing. What, what was the length of the process? For example, a Sailor's Dream. How long did Sailor's that take? Sailor's Dream was around maybe nine or ten months, I think. Okay. So, was that, and that whole time you're playing versions of the game, coming back, composing some music, then presumably are you taking that stuff back and going, what do you think, and then there's a dialogue? Or do you sit down, record it all, and kind of go, this is pretty much it, deal with it? <laughs> we try to have a dialogue. Uh, it's always tough, you know, to get criticism uh, from the people you work with. Uh, but it's, it makes it a better product as well, so. Mm. But there was also a lot of back and forth because we had 
We had a singer, uh, Stephanie Ladovsky from the UK, who sang uh, songs, seven folk songs in the game. So there was also a lot of back and forth there, where I would send demos to her and she would find a key that fit her voice and then I would record the song again in the new key and it was a difficult process, but very rewarding as well. So I'm going to guess, were you working remotely? So is this, this was all operated separately. So how does that affect the creative process? Are you back and forth over Skype, vlog, video chat, that sort of thing to do it? Because especially when you're trying to convey something like music, it can be a little bit... Well, you, people sit in the same room, especially if they're composing with other people. You sit around, you have a jam, you have a chat, and then something comes to you. Doing that online via arguably tinny microphones and whatnot, was it a challenge, or did you find it quite freeing to be able to be in your own space? That's a hard question. Um, I think it's freeing, actually. Uh, but it, I think it, the music would maybe benefit a little from working together in, in the same location. But I, I think it worked out fine. Simogo are located in uh, Malmo and I'm in Gothenburg, so there was... Uh, me and Simon, we text a lot, actually. Really? <laughs> that's, that's the way we work. Kind of a little text adventure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, having got those games out of the way, there's almost been a kind of loose trilogy, I feel, with the last Simogo games, between, between Year Walk and between uh, the Sailor's Dream um, and the one that came before, um, and Device 6, of course. Like, are they now established, James? Are you kind of their in-house composer? Is, is there a relationship like that, or is it still very much like up in the air? I may be their, their troubadour, as Simon <laughs> likes to call it. Nice. Uh, there's uh, a friend of, uh, of Simon who's called, uh, sorry, there's this guy called Daniel Olsiam, okay. which, uh, who has made music for Yearwalk and, and uh, Device 6. Uh, so I see him more as the Simo composer, but Simon makes music too, so we oh. sort of, we're, we're, we divide it as, as we go along. So. Divide amongst yourselves. So having had a first taste of this now, you've done songs for, and music for two games. Is this now the thing that you're pursuing professionally from here on in? Are you interested in composing for video games from here on out? Or has this opened the door into a bunch of different options? Um, I'm not sure, actually. I do graphic design as a full-time job, okay. uh, so the composing is mostly on the side. But I would like to do more composing, absolutely. Yes.